Hey guys, this is Higher Gun Games, and I'm coming to you with a video for, I guess, uh, somebody had a question, and this is going to be going a little bit over um, making the poly strips inside of ZBrush for uh, the fiber mesh. And basically what this is going to be doing is it's going to be allowing you to sculpt fiber mesh hair, but... Um, these are actually going to be poly strips that you're going to be sculpting. Now, I know that there's a lot of tutorials out there for how to do this, but um, I feel like they don't touch up on a lot of uh, techniques that you could use. So hopefully you guys can learn something from this. And um, yeah, so basically what I did for this, and I'm going I'm to go through the entire process, but I wanted to show you what you're exactly getting with this. So if we turn off uh, the preview mode, you'll notice that I now have what seems to be fiber mesh hairs but they're not actually fiber mesh hairs these are actually poly strips so if we go down to our texture map and we turn off our texture map you'll notice that these are now poly strips now this is actually kind of intensive so you might want to play around with your fiber mesh settings to get these to be a little bit lower and a little bit far um far in between uh because i mean there's a lot of poly strips here um it's at thirty thousand points which i'm guessing is probably about maybe I don't know, like 65,000 polygons or so. Uh, I'm not really entirely sure on that, but that is a lot considering that this is just, uh, you know, this is just poly strips. So basically I'm going to take you through the process of what I did. So I'm just going to hide this really quickly and we're going to go back to our hair cap like we did in the last video. And if you guys want, um, I do make a video on how to sculpt poly strips a little bit better. So yeah, and I'm also going to be including a um, groom brushes menu. And this basically has all of the options that you have for the free brushes that I made, as well as um, all of the options for se um, for setting up these brushes and, you know, using the stiffness and the front collision tolerance and all of that stuff. Just basically all located in one nice little kind of menu. Um, that way you don't have to constantly go into your brush menu and then go all the way, you know, down and then open this up and then just mess with this and then go to the auto masking and mess with that. You just have it all nicely in one menu and you also can load any brushes as well. Um, so it's very nice for that. So, um, yeah, you can definitely, uh, you know, I'll leave a link in the description of how you can get all of the brushes as well as the menu and everything like that, as well as the hair uh, material that I made and it's all going to be free so you can download it um, and all of that jazz so anyways um, so basically what I did was again I set up my um, hair cap uh, and again we go over that in the last video I set up my hair cap and this is basically just like the generic kind of um, areas that you would normally have hair uh, growing out of and when you're doing this technique you maybe want to do this section by section and not all is just one thing so maybe I'll just you know hide this off hide the rest of it off and then you know control and then mask on that and then basically grow the fiber mesh from there um, and then basically be able to groom it from that because if you do that a lot of these features that are inside of the fiber mesh window um, especially in the modifiers and max fibers they'll all try to fit the max fibers in this one little area which will cause it to um, be too much it'll be way too many um, fibers in one area and you will then slow down your computer so maybe you want to do this piece by piece and then kind of play around with the max fiber settings but anyways I digress um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on preview and you'll notice that I have this uh, this setup and I'm actually gonna save this off after I'm done with this but basically um, what you want to do is you want to go to your max fibers and kind of set that low so I have about 2.7 max fibers um, I, I actually want to kind of like mess around with that a little bit more um, just to see if I can get a lower amount um, I set the coverage all the way up and you can see that I set the uh, surface area of the coverage variations um, to 0.1 that's just by default I didn't mess with that I also set the scale of the root to 1 and the scale of the tip to 1 I'll also be including this um, hair card preset in the download as well um, so you guys can download that uh, I set the base and the tip to a uh, base of uh, uh, black and then a tip of white so um, that's just basically the color of the guides, I believe. Um, I don't really remember, but I think that's the color of the guides. It has nothing to do with the actual texture of the, the object. And then I put a 
um, texture in here. Now you can bake this kind of texture out there. So many tutorials out there on how to make basically just like a generic hair texture. But basically all you do is you just groom fibers or whatever and then you just render them in the engine and then you have your hair. Um, and this is not going to be the final hair, but this is just kind of giving you an idea of what the hair is kind of looking like as hair so that you can better groom these poly strips a little bit better. Um, and then what you're going to do is set the profile down to 1. Uh, the reason why we do this is because, uh, like I said in the last tutorial, if you set the profiles up too high, then you are basically getting tubes instead of actual hair, uh, instead of poly strips. So you want to keep that at 1 if you're using poly strips, if maybe you're doing dreads or stuff. Uh, maybe you want to increase that a little bit. Um, but uh, you, you won't need to actually increase this because I'll show you in just a second of what's going to be um, what you're going to actually be using in the final result. So then you want to actually set this to a reasonable number 10. Um, I set mine to 10. I might actually end up lowering it maybe to maybe like, um, I don't know, four or five, uh, because I feel like um, the poly strips are just a little bit too uh too divided and it causes a lot of stuff so maybe I might actually set that to eight for long hair um, you know for short or medium hair I might set that to like three or four but yeah like I don't want that to be too high because then it's just subdividing all of these strips and it's just not something that I want to do but maybe for yeah like for long hair I might actually just set that to like eight um, and it does make the hair strips a little bit um, a little bit less resolution but honestly it also gives you a little bit more uh, you know control and then you're done. You're pretty much good to go for your poly strips. Now, remember to set your um, your width as well. So I set my width profile all the way up, um, all the way up to to one on both the uh, vertical and the horizontal, and that's going to give us our nice width um, for our poly strips. So then, after you're done with that, you want to accept this. So now we've accepted this, and you can see that our um, texture is going to stay on there. Um, usually this doesn't happen. Usually the texture doesn't stay on there like that. So you might actually get uh, this and that's awesome because this is what you want. You want to have uh, guides that you can groom. Um, and if you don't know how to groom guides that well, again, um, refer back to my last tutorial on grooming hair very easily inside of uh, ZBrush so that you can groom these very well. But then once you turn that fast preview off and you have your texture on there, you're going to notice that it's going to turn back to uh, poly strips. Now, um, if you want these poly strips to be transparent so that you can actually make it look like actual hair, you can actually go to your texture map and then turn on the transparency um, all the way up for these, and that will get rid of all of the um, black area in the texture. Now, if you want actual color for these, you have to color the um, the texture. So if I go in here and I load in a texture, now let me just drag this off so you guys aren't uh, blinded. Uh, let me see. Where are you? There we are. So I actually have a brown um, texture, and it's just basically the brown. Uh, it's just the the same texture, but it's colored brown now, and it still has the black background. And if we just take that all the way up, you can now see that now there is actually brown, um, which is awesome. So we can also turn that off, and we can see just our poly strips, and you can see our poly strip groups are grouping, and that's actually really nice. Now to um, if you want to actually start grooming this hair uh, what you could do is you can groom it now which you know it's uh, it's very hard to groom um, because there's so much of it but what I like to do is again using the last uh, video um, as reference you can turn this back into the fast preview you can hide these poly groups by control shift so we're gonna go to our select lasso we're gonna actually grab these and control shift and just hide those now the cool thing about this is that if you have like groups that you're like okay well I don't want those groups I don't want the sides they look kind of stupid then you can always go in here and delete hidden which is in your geometry uh, modified topology and then delete hidden so that you can delete those poly groups and the great thing about that is that it won't um, mess up your hair so now if I try to reveal my poly groups by shift um, control shift and clicking in the viewport you can see that those poly groups are deleted and I still have my hair guides um, all set up now another cool feature inside of ZBrush that a lot of people don't really mention um, and let's just actually kind of groom these a little bit uh, let me actually turn back on my head so I can see where I'm going and then we can you know maybe groom these I'm not gonna do too wild of a hairdo I just want to kind of get you guys into the idea of uh, what I'm doing but I'm just gonna groom this like really quickly and 
Again, it's kind of hard to kind of get a hold of these, but that's fine because we can just. Eh, eh, eh. There we go. Uh, we can actually just kind of like groom these straight back. And again, like it's you have to think of it like actual hair when you're grooming it. Just you know, what would you do if you wanted the hair to go back? You'd have to groom it. You know, turn it the head this way, groom it down, and then you know, turn it this way, and then groom it down this way, and boom! Now you're starting to get that nice little curl going in. Um. And then we can kind of like maybe make this into like a point. Uh, if you want it to go above the head, just use the uh, the move tool and kind of pull that above, just ever so slightly. Eh. And if you want these nasty little kind of like things to go away, you can just hold shift, go into the groom smoothing, and then just kind of um, smoothing away those little bumps. Uh, that is good for that. So we're just gonna pull these out like this, just a little bit. I'm going to pull this in. I'm only doing this because somebody asked me how to basically convert fiber mesh to game hair, and there's really no way to convert it. The best thing that you can do um, when you're working with game hair is to make it game ready right away because it's extremely hard to convert um, fiber mesh into game ready hair uh, because you basically have to just like retop over every single one of these poly groups and then bake it down, which is really tedious and annoying, but some people do it. And uh, I commend those people for doing that kind of stuff. So now that we have like this kind of generic little hairdo going on for her, now what we can do is we can go back in and go to fiber mesh, uh, turn off fast preview so we can kind of see what, what it looks like. Also go out of here and now you can see that this is what our hair looks like. Now you can see that this is really starting to take, um, uh, en encumber the computer a lot. Uh, so you maybe want to just use this for like, uh, you know, very quickly kind of looking at your mesh and uh, seeing what seeing what uh, can be changed, what you can do. Maybe you want to make variation over here and you're like, okay, well, I want to make this kind of like group right here kind of fall down to make it look a little bit better. So you can go back into fast preview, go back into polyframe, um, use your selection lasso, grab those, and now you can actually start to groom um, this this poly group and you can start to groom it this way this is how I want these I want these to kind of like fall down a little bit this way and maybe I don't want it to be like sticking out like that so these are kind of like well these are gonna be flyaways maybe I want to make these like a little bit of a flyaway going on and then we can go back in and undo that see how it looks real quick and then turn off fast preview and how is that gonna look and I like that. I like the fact that it's giving us a little bit more variation. And then we can go back in and turn that on. And yeah, so if you want to actually then convert these to poly strips um, for the engine, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your BPR settings and you're going to turn off your subdivisions. Again, if you are using um, profiles, this is going to be your profile area. So if you're doing dreads or something like that, this is where you're going to subdivide your profiles to make the dreads. Uh, and then if you want to leave it at poly strips and you don't want any subdivisions, turn this off because what this is doing essentially is it's saying I want to subdivide down the strip and I also want to subdivide the profile. So it's going to turn it into really high poly dreads, um, which are, you know, not what we're going for. We're going for poly strips. So you want to turn this off and it's going to turn off these by default. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go back up to your geometry. Um, and let's say you're not really sure. You're like, okay, well, I, I want to do this, but I'm not really sure if I, I want to, you know, do this and lose my undo history and all that. So just go in here, duplicate this off, hide this, and then go to convert BPR to geo. Um, and that will basically convert uh, this object to uh, geometry, which I'm actually going to undo that. And I'm going to go here to fiber mesh. Uh, turn off fast preview so that we get this and then we're going to go here and convert that and now we should have no fiber mesh settings um, we shouldn't that's interesting why is that doing that convert BPR to geo did it work did it work I think now we can actually export these. I'm not entirely sure because these are supposed to be just meshes. Oh, okay, yeah, it did work. Okay, I think it worked. No? 
maybe. All right, so now what we can do is we can actually go in here and export this. So export this. Um, we can go to Polystrip and we're done. You know, you can actually then boom, uh, you know, apply the textures to your hair and you have your high poly uh, hair. So again, you want to kind of play around with the you want to kind of play around with the max uh, fibers and stuff like that inside of your modifiers and you should be good so let's actually just open this up really quickly inside of marmoset to uh, show you what's going on so we're gonna go here we're gonna go to uh, import model we're gonna go to desktop polystrip hair and there it is right there boom and then we can go to cold back faces and of course this is all gonna be different poly groups uh, so maybe you want to actually make these all one poly group before you export them, but uh, You know maybe multiple poly groups is how you want to apply your materials to it But yeah, here it is right here. We can go in here to transparency uh, Add a dithering Go here. Uh, yeah, go here Turn that down. Oh, you know what here it is G there we go and there we go. Now you'll notice that it's flipped upside down. That's because the UVs inside of ZBrush are flipped uh, upside down automatically. So I flipped the texture upside down just to kind of counter that. And maybe make the background. There we go. And that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much how you do that. You know, spend a lot more time on it. Um, get your game ready hair going, and then uh, boom. You got your game ready hair. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something. And uh, yeah, all the links are going to be down in the description. And you guys have an amazing day. Take care, guys. Bye. Oh, also before I go, um, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> also before I go, um, you can also cut the hair. Uh, a lot of people don't know that you can cu cut the hair uh, using the clip curve brush. So we're just going to do a little demonstration on that really quickly. Uh, we're going to go here, we're going to go to fast preview settings, we're going to go to our control uh, shift, go to our clip curve. What this will allow you to do is allow you to cut the hair. So if we go in here and we cut it, let's say we want to cut, oops, we want to cut um, maybe up to this point, we're just going to go here, cut that. Now you'll notice that it shows this uh, skewing, well that's easy, you can just comb that out. So just use your goom brushes, um, comb that out, and you can see that it's not actually the link that we want it to you just go in there and you just recut it again until you reach the link that you want and you just groom that out and as you can see the hair is cut it is still guide hair and it is uh it's awesome so you know just uh you know a little heads up on that sorry um i completely forgot about that let's say we want to actually cut these hairs oops um what happened what did happen oh my god what did happen oh you know what i accidentally clicked on that so yeah uh and then we want to Go in here, we want to groom this out, and then we want to cut it again, just like actual hair, you know, cut it again. And then, yeah, so the cool thing about this is if we take off Fast Preview, you can see that that's actually adjusting our poly strips as well. So that's really cool. Um, and then we can go in here to our uh, texture map and turn that back on, and you can see that uh, those little hairs that we cut are actually adjusting to our texture as well we're not cutting off the texture isn't that so cool that is really cool so yeah i just wanted to throw that in there i almost forgot about that so yeah all right guys thank you thank you for so, so much for watching bye